All right, everybody, welcome to my basement. Welcome to uh, Music Theory 4. Here we go. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, sort of the introduction to atonality. And atonality is, is definitely a concept that yeah, I think is a little unfamiliar to a lot of folks. We're used to uh, very easily understanding without any explanation what we mean by just tonal music, right? But just to give a clear example, tonal music is music where this can clearly tell us what key we're in, everything we want. And, you know, over the semesters, I've always joked about how cadences like that and a really strong tonality are really critical for the way this music works. And I've often said that, like, you know, so if we just sort of were in this wild and nebulous place, as soon as we were able to hear something like that, we would automatically know right where we are uh, key-wise. So this is sort of taking the most dramatic departure from that and is saying, well, what if the, the key center wasn't the defining principle of music? What if there were other things that really uh, made the most important impact on the way the music is organized? And so the first thing for us to really understand is that uh, it's not a, a lack of a system. It's just an, a, a very, very, very different system and a very different way of understanding the music that we're talking about. So that's sort of our framework here. Um, because we're dealing with a very different framework and a very different technique, we have to develop a very distinct and different set of, um, so we, we need to develop a different dialect, almost a different language to start talking about this. So that's really what we're going to learn about today is the, the language and the method of talking about these things. Because think about all the ways that we have analyzed and understood music up to this point. It's all been centered around the knowledge of what key we're in. Everything we've done, whether, you know, we have already touched on this, but whether it's a different, s the solfege system that we use, like knowing, okay, here we go, we've got do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. But if we're not in the key of C major, that doesn't work. And if we're not really centered around a traditional key, that breaks down very quickly as well. Um, so things like that, you can immediately figure that we're entering into very new territory. And so new territory deserves new language to accurately describe what we're talking about. And so we're going to do, uh, we're going to use a lot of the ideas from a book that I think is really valuable. Uh, it's called Introduction to Post-Tonal Theory uh, by a guy named Joseph N. Strauss. And so some of the stuff we're going to talk about today uh, and just over the next couple lessons uh, come from that. So this is all about learning a new kind of language. We're going to go into a, a screen share here, and we're going to do some good old-fashioned PowerPointing. So here we go. So we're be really just talking basic atonal techniques here as we as we discuss this stuff basic 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 atonal techniques so um the the biggest starting point is that as we mentioned there's no tonal center that doesn't mean again that the music isn't organized and it doesn't mean that the music can't point towards certain notes it just means there isn't one central place that the music is all organized around you know when we think about uh, music in a major or a minor key, even our system of Roman numerals, right, refers back to everything as how far away from the one chord it is, right? So when we talk about in C major, uh, when we're in C major, the F chord, we don't even just call it F, right? We call it four because it's four, good old club, four away from the one chord, right? It doesn't even get to have its own identity. And so we start to see how the, the, the tonal system that we're used to is really built on everything, having that relationship to a tonal center. Uh, this system is really trying to break that down and is instead focused around all 12 pitches having equal value and equal importance and really uh, gets into that as a guiding principle. Now... Again, I've already said this, but I'm going to say it again and again and again. One of the most critical things to remember is that this music, even though it's not based on the structures that we know and are familiar with, and even though it can sound initially very, very wild and very new, 
is actually still extremely heavily structured. It's still based around really tightly organized musical ideas. And it has to be so organized because it's taking something in such a new and unfamiliar approach, right? When things are in a key, right? I can kind of do a whole lot of stuff. I'm really not thinking about what, what I'm doing. I'm just using everything in the C major type world. And I just did a classic, uh, wouldn't be allowed in theory one, two, or three, two to one cadence. We would think of that as being not super structured because it's so, it doesn't use the dominant, whatever. Um, but our ears can still pick up the central nature of C major um, because it's so familiar to us. So that's a big, that's a big difference. This is very much going to be still super structured and in atonal music writ large, there are two main ways that the music stays structured. Um, one is through just the grouping of the notes, the notes as they appear together, and the other is in the order that the notes appear. So those two ways tend to become the way that uh, this is organized. And so, like I said, we need a new language to describe the music. This new language comes in the form for us of what we would call pitch class. Now, we already talked about some new language to name the notes, namely switching from um, movable do, in which whatever the key was, so here in F major, we know that F is do, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do, right? But uh, we've talked in fixed do about how that would be uh, using very different terms. So this would be fa, so, la, si, do, si, la, so, fa. That's already different, and of course, since life is full of fun and uh, changes, we're going to add some new terminology to our understanding of pitch class. And so we're really trying to streamline the way that we describe pitch and really point again to that idea that all 12 notes are equivalent. All 12 notes have the same level of importance, the same value in our musical system. They're enharmonically equivalent. And so when we've talked before, and this is something I have to sort of say a lot to people in like theory one or a music fundamentals class is there's always that question, well, why, why should we have two different names? Why should we call it C-sharp sometimes and D-flat another time? And the answer is that in so many ways, that points to its role in the tonality, right? <laughs> On its own, C-sharp or C-sharp, you know, doesn't really have much of a color to it, but if I play A and E with that note, it makes a lot more tonal sense to call it C sharp, whereas if the notes that are around it are F and A flat, it makes a lot more sense to call it D flat for that tonal place, that tonal understanding. But since we don't have that sense of tonal centeredness right now, we can really use naming conventions that point to the equivalence or the equality of all the notes in a pitch class. So really quickly, when we talk about a pitch class, that just means all of the notes that have the exact same name. This is not the same as like fixed do. When we talked about fixed do, we said anytime you have a note that's spelled as F, we're going to call it fa. So whether it's F natural, F sharp, F flat, F double sharp, we would still call it fa in fixed do. That's not what we're talking about now. We're sort of being more specific. So for pitch class, we truly mean all notes that are F. So this F, this one, this one, this one, this one. Those are all part of the same pitch class, whereas all F sharps are part of a different pitch class. They're part of their own pitch class. So it's more specific than fixed do, but it still has that sense of equivalency to it. And so we can see down here at the bottom, we've got uh, all of the different pitch classes, the 12 different pitch classes that we could encounter because we know that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 notes. And I just counted, but I did it in a different way. But numbers are going to be the most convenient way for us to describe these. So this is sort of one of those sad moments where I put this up and everybody in the class thinks that 
they've accidentally been in a math class the whole time and I've just been fooling them. Basically, yeah, that's what's been happening. So because the names that we're going to give to these notes are number-oriented. And so whenever we're talking about notes in the pitch class with C natural or B sharp or D double flat, however you want to call it, uh, we are going to call those zero. Those are in the pitch class zero. And it just goes up from there. So anything in the C sharp or D flat pitch class, whether it's that one, that one, that one, that one, um, those are going to be in the pitch class one and all the way up. Um, this is definitely very new, very different, and it's going to take some time to get familiar with this idea. But the thing that it does, remember, we want to use a different name to describe and to describe something in a new and different way. We are not going to try to use the notes in the same way that we would before, so we want to give them a new name so that we don't keep them stuck in that old way of understanding them. I knew a guy uh, when I was a kid. He was from a Chinese family, and uh, his family always called him a Chinese nickname um, that I don't particularly exactly remember right now, but the nickname was something that translated to Dream Boy, and you better believe as he got older and uh, whether it was just middle school, high school, or then into the professional realm, he didn't really want people calling him Dream Boy anymore. You know, to each their own. Some of us can still be a Dream Boy. Um, but anyway, so we want new names to let ourselves have a new way of using and thinking about things. And so while this is weird and different and we just want to go back to calling A and A, uh, those days are gone because A is now, say it quick, it's nine right so that's sort of our fun new way um, something that I think is helpful to think about this right so C natural is zero so halfway between C natural is F sharp the tritone and that's six because it's six half steps right one two three four five six so the tritone is six and that's a nice sort of middle middle place to remember it. Um, I think you can even go beyond that. And one way that I like to think about it is by thinking of a fully diminished seventh chord. And what we find is that that is all minor thirds, which are three half steps apart. So we've got zero, three to D sharp, six to F sharp, and nine to A natural. You could do C, E flat, G flat, B double flat if you wanted to be really pure on the spelling, but that fully diminished seventh chord, zero, three, six, nine. And if you can remember where all those notes are, it's easy to find the other things around it. All right, so let's practice this a little bit. It's very new. So let's look at this little melody here. Let's see how this bad boy would sound. That's a fun one. Um, so let's see if we can figure this out. The first note is G. We remember that C is zero. And there's a helpful note for us that's right below G. We learned what the new name for F sharp is. What do we call that? It was six. So if F sharp is six, then G natural is seven. All right. Our second note here was A natural. This is two ways that we could think about this. Number one, we could remember the name for A natural, which we talked about. It's part of our fully diminished seventh chord. Zero, three, six, nine. Nine is the name for A natural. But we can also just think really carefully about intervals, right? Because G is seven, and A is a whole step away from G. A whole step is two half steps, so it's two numbers, right? Seven to nine is a whole step, right? So that's fun. So what's this next one? It's a half step above A natural. It's B flat. It's 10. All right. And now we've got A flat. Again, always a number of ways to think about this. We can think about if A natural 
was nine, what's a half step or one step, one one note below A natural, would get us to A flat. But also, it's a whole step below our ten. So that means it's number eight. Here's we got another. Here's what is that? We've got another whole step here from A flat to G flat. G flat, F sharp, one of our uh, sort of notes that we remember things by. So that's six. F natural is going to be good. Five. Then we've got another half step down. What's E natural going to be, do you think? It's going to be four. Here's D natural. What are we going to call that? We're going to call it two. C sharp is one. D sharp is three. And E natural is going to be four. All right? So that's one melody. Here's another one that we can practice with. Let's try this out. This melody starts on G, so you can already be thinking about what the name for G is here. This one goes like this. Bonus points for anybody who knows where those notes are from, where you've heard those notes before. Um, okay, so it starts on G. Let's do this one a little quicker. G is seven. Then we've got an E flat. What's that gonna be called? three. What about A flat? What are we going to call that? That's eight. D flat is one. Very good. What about A natural? Quick, quick, quick. That's nine. We haven't done, we didn't do this note in the last one. B natural. It's maybe one of the harder ones. B natural is 11. 11. So we've got a repeated B natural there. So we, our next new note is D natural. We're going to call that two. This one's always a breath of fresh air. C natural, the most nothing note there is. Call it zero. What about F sharp? That's six. Then we've got F natural is five. Good. What about B flat is 10? And then E natural is four. So that's very new, very different, but it's still an important way to think about things. All right, so those are our new note names. I know that this is definitely a very, very big change for all of us, but it's important that we think of new, new concepts with a new language so that we truly don't let them get caught in the old way. All right. So we're going to talk about new things, new uh, ways that we can relate the notes to each other next.